I made something kind of crazy. This right here is what I missed the most during quarantine. Just getting together with a small group of friends and chilling with some drinks and good music. Speaking of drinks, this is House. It's an aperitif with a lower alcohol percentage, which means that there's less of a chance that you'll have a hangover the next day after drinking it. It comes in a few different flavors like this citrus flower and bitter clove, which I think tastes really great, just poured over ice or simply mixed with some soda water. Simple is the key word here. House is made up of real, natural ingredients from a family farm in Sonoma, California with zero sketchy additives. So if you're looking for a simply made drink yet unique and complex in flavor, check out House and it will be delivered right to your door. The first 100 people who purchase two bottles of House through my link in the description will get $10 off and free shipping. Thank you so much House for sponsoring this video. Now let's start the build. I started out by finding an Explorer template online, then shrinking it down when I printed it. It's really easy to line everything up on a window because the light is shining through. So in the next few clips, I'm going to be making an MDF template from that paper template, and it's all pretty self-explanatory stuff. So let me just talk for a moment as to why I'm building this three string guitar. Reason number one, I'm participating in the great guitar build off this year. And there are a few techniques that I really wanted to experiment with for that build and some techniques that I know that I need practice with. So this is an experimental <laughs> practice build. The second reason I built a three string cigar box style guitar two years ago, and I didn't really like the way that I constructed the box or body. So since then I've been wanting to make a new one to test out better ways to make the body or the box. So <laughs> here it is. The body is going to be made up of two pieces of plywood cut out to shape and then glued together. So I roughly cut those outside shapes of the bandsaw and then I use the MDF template to clean them up with a flush trim bit at the router table. The body's going to be hollow in the center like a cigar box guitar would be. And to do this, I roughly marked out a quarter inch around the perimeter of the piece that's going to make up the body. And I cut that out on the bandsaw. But as you can see here, I was struggling a little bit to get those inside curves with the blade that I had on. So I took it off camera, drilled out some holes in those inside corners, so much better. <laughs> so now I know how to do an operation like this for the future. So for the second piece that makes up the body, I couldn't cut it on the bandsaw that same way because the neck that I'm going to use is not the same thickness as two pieces of three quarter inch plywood. So I decided to do it this way. <laughs> I glued on that second piece of the body while it was still whole and solid. Besides for the neck pocket <laughs> situation, I also thought that keeping it solid would just make this glue up more stiff and stable. I think maybe I need just one more clamp. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> After the glue dried, I drilled some starter holes in all the curves and then I cut out the whole middle section with a jigsaw staying about a quarter inch away from the edge. This is how I thought that the bandsaw cut would go earlier. Again, lesson learned. So then at the router table, I can flush up the second piece with the first. And I think this whole process is going to make more sense when you see me cut out the neck pocket a little later in the video, but I am not 100% sold on this whole process yet. So there will definitely be a V3 of these cigar box style guitars where I make the box from scratch. The main box is now done and off camera, I cut a top and bottom using the MDF template on eighth inch thick plywood. Now it's time to figure out the pattern for the top. I rated my scrap in for any pieces that I could use and I resawed them into strips that are about a 16th inch thick. This new bandsaw is changing my life. Um, I wanna make a veneer top for my great guitar build off guitar. So this was my practice round where I can hopefully work out all of the kinks. I decided that it would look cool if the veneers were just cut into random geometric shapes and glued together. So I started cutting. Since the veneers are so thin, they can just be cut with a knife, but you are right. I am struggling here with this X-Acto knife. I'm going to fix that in a bit. <laughs> so in order for all the edges of the veneers to sit tightly next to each other with zero gaps, I just clean them up with a hand plane on my shooting board. This is so fun to do. Uh, if you haven't used a hand plane on a shooting board, I highly recommend it. 
I tried to make the pattern as random as possible, so I would just trace the edges of the angled openings in the pattern with my knife, cut it out, clean it up, and put it into place. Sometimes the veneer pieces wouldn't line up after cutting, so I would just hold the pieces at a slight opposing angle on the plane on my shooting board, take a few passes, and then it would fit perfectly. Ah, finally, I found a sharp utility knife and this started to go much quicker. This was one of those things where I just put on some good music, got lost in the whole process, and didn't even realize that I was working till 10 o'clock at night. And here I'm about to almost mess everything up. I had all of the pieces in perfect locations next to each other with zero gaps, and they were nicely held in place with tape. I mentioned it was 10 o'clock at night, right? So I decided to take the tape off and individually glue down each piece. I got halfway through all of these pieces when I realized that putting glue on only one side of the super thin pieces was making them curl upwards and then they were no longer sitting flush and it was looking horrible. Oh shoot, I see a big gap here. So I made the decision to quickly get some pressure on everything that I already put glue on and come back to the second half the next day. I'm really happy that I decided to stop when I saw that it wasn't going well. All right, let's see how this did. Not so bad, but not perfect. I'm gonna try another way to glue this on because that was a disaster. This time, I decided to just glue up the whole taped up piece at one time. So much easier. Working late at night always causes problems for me and I need to remember that more often. So I just sandwiched it between a piece of MDF and an old guitar template, added some weights in the center, and that second glue up came out so much cleaner. I think we are good. I'm so happy that I decided to do this practice experiment project because now I know what to do for my actual great guitar build off project. To get the top to its final shape, I temporarily put the MDF template with double-sided tape on, and then I cut it as close to the template as I could possibly get at the bandsaw. This way, I didn't have much material to remove with the flush trim bit, and it would eliminate any chance of tear out. Oh, yeah. This was so awesome to see in its final shape, and I just needed to sand it now. I definitely see a drum sander in my future. So, up close you can see that the top half, which was my second glue up, is so clean with no gaps, but the bottom half, the first glue up, there's some slight gabbage. So I use some sawdust and glue to try to fix it. It's not perfect looking, but much better. And yes, I keep baggies full of sawdust in my shop. Moving on to the neck. I decided to purchase a cigar box guitar neck for this build because Crimson supplied me with a neck for the great guitar build off. And it just wasn't something that I needed practice or experimenting with for the build off. I used calipers to get the final thickness of the top and mark that onto the neck. I want there to be a slight back angle on this guitar. So I measured about an eighth, maybe three sixteenths from that top thickness line on the very end of the neck and connected those two points to create a very slight angle that the neck will sit relative to the body and follow that angle on the bandsaw until I got up to that fretboard. And then I cut off that piece with a handsaw held also at a slight angle because the edge of the top is going to be touching that part at an angle, or at least that's what I thought at, at this point. So this cutoff is actually going to be really handy in a few steps, you'll see why. And then I just cleaned up all those bandsaw cuts with a Shinto rasp and made sure that everything was square. I love using the Shinto rasp. In order for the guitar to make sound acoustically, the top of it needs to float as much as possible. So it's going to vibrate. The more it vibrates, the more sound it's going to produce. So I want to notch out part of this neck so the top will be able to vibrate freely as much as possible. The two spots that I'm going to leave attached to the top are the two pickup locations. These notches don't need to go deep at all, maybe an eighth. The gap on the end is easy to cut off with a handsaw. Well, easy if you have the right saw. There's a reason why they make special ripping blades and I need to remember that more often. 
The notch in the middle could be cut out a hundred and one different ways. I happened to have been in a hand tool mood that day, so I made some curve cuts with a handsaw and knocked out the waist with a chisel. I was really only trying to quickly remove material here. Perfection was not my goal at all. No one will ever be able to see this because it's going to be inside the box. Well, I lied. It will sort of be seen through the sound hole. So I used India ink to stain it black so it really gets hidden. And while I was at it, I also stained the inside of the guitar back as well for the same reason. This neck came fretted and had fret markers, but it did not have side dots. For my last cigar box style guitar build where I actually did make the neck from scratch, I used these little wire nails as the side dots and I really like that so I used that again here. After hammering them into place, I just used a nail set to make sure that they were nice and flush. While this neck came with frets, the fret job on them was awful. I almost cut myself on the edges of the frets that were sticking out. So I got the edges smooth and realized that the tops of the frets were not level, so I had to level them all out. This makes the frets flat, so then I had to make the frets round again and then smooth over all the edges and polish them to a nice shine. I despise doing fret work and I'm not really great at it at all, but these frets look better than my last guitar and hopefully my next one will look even better than this one. Moving on to the neck pocket. I used calipers to get the correct depth of the neck and mark that onto the body, then did the same to mark the width of the neck onto the body as well. I cut the opening with a handsaw and coping saw, and you can see here the reason why I didn't cut the second body piece on the bandsaw. I was trying to preserve that little bit of material that makes up the difference of the two pieces of plywood and the thickness of the neck. But as I was cleaning this up, I think I thought of a better way. All right, so now I'm realizing an easier way that I could have done this would have been to cut out the second um, outer shape just like I did the first one on the bandsaw instead of gluing it up um, solid like I did and then just gluing in a shim to the piece that I'm going to use as the back and then that would create that thickness that I needed. So that's what I'll do next time, but for this time I'm just gonna continue cleaning this up. That's why I experiment. <laughs> so the neck was now sitting perfectly in the body. The top just needs to be notched out for the fretboard. I used a combo square to mark how deep I wanted the notch to go and used a straight edge along the neck to establish the sides. Now I have to cut into this and I'm super scared. <sighs> don't mess it up. I feel like every time that I say don't mess it up, I end up messing it up. So I'm just not going to say it anymore. <laughs> I was so careful not to go over the lines and I really took my time making this cut. And then I spent a lot of time with the Shinto rasp, also just really trying to get that perfect fit. And it was. It was such a nice fit. And then I saw it. Oh, shoot. So because I cut the notch for the fretboard to sit like this, I did not take into account the heel on this neck. So in its current location, the heel, the curve is starting the, like before um, that cutout. So what it would have been better for me to do would have been to line everything up and place the neck so it's a little bit uh, further up, like that. And that way the neck would be flat and the heel would be in the correct position. But because I already just cut the notch out, there's that little space there. <sighs> I knew I was gonna mess up this part. <laughs> but I'm gonna have to sleep on how to fix this. I think I figured something out. I don't need to sleep on it. So I'll pull it out to right where the curve of the heel is. So right where um, there's no gaps gonna be on the back. And I just realized that I have this pickguard cover that's going to go right underneath the neck. So that's just gonna cover up that little gap that I have there and nobody will know that it's there except for you guys. All right, crisis averted. Moving right along, I worked on the headstock. I copied the shape of an Explorer headstock I found online, roughly cut it out on the bandsaw, brought it closer to its final shape on the benchtop sander, and refined the shape with a Shinto rasp and then a spoke shave. If you've never used a spoke shave, it is probably the most fun hand tool to use. Check out the links below for all these hand tools from Woodcraft. They are awesome. 
My plan was to embed the piezo pickup into the neck right under the bridge, so I drilled out a hole with a Forstner bit so the piezo can be recessed into the neck. Spoiler alert, this doesn't go as planned. Uh, another thing that I need practice with is soldering. It actually took me a few times to get the ground wire to stick to the metal edge on the piezo. I temporarily sol soldered, <laughs> soldered it to a uh, jack just to test it out. And I was so happy to hear that tapping sound, so I finished up the top to prepare for final assembly. I cut out a rectangle in the center of the top that will act as the sound hole. I made it this shape to mimic the shape of the pickup cover that I'm using by the neck. And a coping saw was the perfect tool for this job because I could detach one, of, one end of the blade, insert it into the hole, reattach the blade, and make the cuts. And I realized at this point that I could have used that cutout to fix my notch mistake from earlier, but that's going to be covered up by the pickup cover anyway, and I have a plan for that cutoff. So no scraps are going to waste in my shop. After the sound hole was cleaned up, I hot glued a piece of window screen to the back of it. I did this on my last cigar box style guitar and loved it. Not only does it make the sound hole look like a speaker, it acts as a Lego stopper so the kids can't drop anything into the sound hole. I really want to do this to all my acoustic guitars. Then I drilled holes for the pickup wire, the selector switch, the knobs, the ground wire, and the audio jack, which actually ended up being too small, but I'll fix that in a bit. Time for the glue up. First, I hot glued the piezo into place and covered it with more hot glue to secure it into place. It was still working at this point, so I moved on to the rest of the glue up. The neck gets glued into the neck pocket and the top gets glued onto the body at those two points that I didn't cut out of the neck earlier. I placed a call on the back of the neck right by the bridge to get good clamping pressure onto the top from that location. I have a feeling that this is where something happened to the piezo. Maybe I clamped it too hard and it cracked, or maybe the uh, solder joint came loose. I'm really not sure, but it's definitely a lesson learned. Don't trap the piezo in a place where it can't be removed. <laughs> so cool. I didn't realize that anything was wrong at this point, so I was super pumped and thought this was a success. So remember that cutoff piece from when I cut the angle on the front of the neck. So I saved that and I'm going to use that onto the back so that there's no gap between the back of the neck and the back of the body. So I cut those pieces to size and used regular wood glue for lasting strength and a few drops of CA glue to act as clamps while that wood glue dries and sets up. Now the back of the body is flush with the back of the neck. Then I pre-drilled some holes into the back, clamped it into place, and pre-drilled some more holes into the plywood body and locked the back into place with finish washers and screws. Maybe I didn't need this many screws, but I think it actually looks cool on the back like this, especially with the finish washers. In an ideal world, all of these pieces would line up perfectly with each other, but they didn't, so I needed to sand everything flush and then round it over the edges to make everything nice and smooth. I totally forgot about the knot. Oh, I'll do that after. I thought I was almost done. All right, almost there. I marked out for the tuning pegs, trying to get the straightest string pull as I could possibly get, and I drilled for the tuning pegs. I have this little branding iron that's supposed to fit on the end of a soldering iron, but I haven't found a way to do that, so I just hold it in some vice grips and use a blowtorch to heat it up and I left it on for just a little too long. Nothing a little sandpaper can't fit. I took off the back and got to finishing, finally. I decided to try out the penetrating guitar finishing oil that Crimson sent me for the Great Guitar build off, and I'm totally going to use it on that build because it's awesome. But my camera battery dies now. <laughs> what a bad moment for it to die. Anyway, time for the nut. I marked the top of the frets, sanded it down until it looked good, and glued it into place. Definitely one of the things I needed to practice with for the great guitar build off. Remember that audio jack hole that I drilled out earlier that was too small? In order to drill out a larger hole, I plugged it up with a dowel using CA glue so that it set up pretty quickly, and then I used a flush trim saw to cut it away. Now I can drill a larger hole and there won't be any issues of the bit wandering because the tip of the bit has something to dig into. Problem solved. 
And now finally time to wire everything up. This has two pots, one volume, one tone, and a three-way switch that's connected to the piezo and a neck pickup. Like I said earlier, I'm not great at soldering and wiring really confuses me actually, but I'm really happy that I got this practice in before the big build. For the audio jack cover, I took the cutoff from the sound hole that I cut earlier, shaped it to match the curves of the Explorer, and thinned it out so that it would bend a little bit more, drilled some holes in it, then attached the audio jack to it, and then screwed it to the body. Cool. Um, I really like how this looks. The neck pickup just sits on top of the top, and the cover gets screwed into place. Then I installed the bridge. Yes, they make bridges with three saddles <laughs> for cigar box guitars. And I made sure that it was in the correct location for the scale length of this guitar neck, which was 25 and a half inches from the nut. I also made sure that it was in line with the neck and I made sure that the ground wire that was running from the pots was touching the back of the bridge. So I don't have any grounding issues. Then I installed the tuning pegs and filed in some starter slots into the nut and strung it up. Since the neck has a slight back angle to it, I needed to raise the saddles on the bridge to get a good action height. And then I continued filing the nut slots to get a good action height over there. I honestly thought that this part would be harder than it was. I'm ready to close it up now, but just a few things to note. So um, I drilled over here and it was too close to the edge of the plywood and it didn't sink through all the plywood. So I had to add these two little blocks here. So that's going to support the piece. And the piezo wasn't working when I plugged it in. So I ended up having to hot glue another one there and cut some wires and rewire everything. I don't know what happened. It just wasn't working. Maybe something happened while I was gluing it up or something. Not sure, but uh, this works now. And as you see, I hot glued all the wires down so that nothing is shaking when you shake it. Um, if you can see also the screws here on all these things are sticking out. I might put in some blocks here to uh, support that, but I think I might just leave it as is. And now I'm just going to Cover it up. So I locked the back into place like I did before finishing, and this time I drilled into the neck and added two larger finish washers and larger screws to make sure that the neck is really secured to the back of the body. This is why I glued those angled spacers into place earlier. I decided to replace one of the screws in the back with a strap button and screwed the other strap button onto the bottom, locked on the knobs, and it's done. How cool is this? So before I bring it over to my friend's house, who's an excellent guitarist, and he could just show off what it can actually do, I just wanna show you guys what it sounds like acoustically. So. There's not a ton of sound coming out of there, but it's enough to be able to practice and get some good sound. Let me plug it in now, one sec. So I have the D, G, and B strings from a regular electric guitar, and I have it tuned to E, B, E, which is an open tuning, and if I strum, that makes a chord, that's an E chord. And all you need is one finger to play chords along the neck, so you just fret along all the strings, and that's another chord. and easy to play even for people who aren't great guitarists like me. Thank you to Woodcraft and House for sponsoring this video. Now let's hear what this thing really sounds like. Cheers.
One more song. One more. Free bird. Now let's start the build. Oops, I spilled it myself. <laughs>